This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham and I have got Tara Lee Kelford with me. You are the chair of Cornerstone Landing Youth Services. Welcome. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you as well. Thanks. I, I know I have seen you on, on New Year's Day. Happy <laughs> New Year. My goodness, last time I saw you, you were jumping into the rivers of uh, the Tay Basin. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's an odd way to meet on New Year's Day, but, uh, <laughs> but for sure, fun. for sure. The the polar plunge, though, that was the first time you took uh, took place. That, well, that you you did it. So good job on you. So let's talk a little bit about the polar plunge. So successful. Yeah, it, it was a really fun event. Yeah, it was really fun. It's over quick. It's amazing how many plungers you get through. I think we had 116 plungers, uh, plus a couple of organizers included in that. And I think we were all done the plunge with like well under an hour. We put 116 plungers. Well, through. I noticed so was everybody so was standing in line so. outside too. So they, uh, yes, they were ready to yeah. go in their shorts or bathing suits. And, and uh, yeah, Brian yeah. Perkin was the MC, and it was like three, two, one, get in there sort of thing and get yeah, back in water. Yeah. And, and obviously, as you recognized, uh, people don't linger in the water. They get out pretty quick. So it's <laughs> not too, you know, you're circling them through pretty quick. So, but yeah, it was a really fun event. Not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be, although I got mixed uh, mixed information about whether it's better to have a really cold day out in warm water or warm day in cold water. So, but anyways, it's, yeah. it's done. It was actually really fun. So uh, now let's talk about it going out because I know you were really anxious about it, nervous about it. And uh, <laughs> I mean, you jumped in. Were you the first one to go in or was Dave? Yeah, I ended up being the first. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, you were the first one. one. Yeah. The first. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think it's a tradition. Dave's normally goes first, but. So you didn't even have anybody to, to, to lead the way. <laughs> no, no. And I was looking at Bob Perot beside me. He was looking nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he's done it for five years. He has. Yeah, he's done it many years. Yeah, yeah good yeah. for him. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about the event itself because the, the proceeds went to Cornerstone Landing Youth Services. So successful. I remember Brian Perkins saying, you know, asking uh, the organizers about uh, the amount of money that you raised. And they said, oh, this is one of the top five. Yeah, yeah, 22,411, I believe, right yeah. down to the dollar. So, um, yeah, pretty amazing. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if you've ever organized an event, which, you know, we do several events a year uh, for Cornerstone as fundraisers, but you always get so nervous because a lot of the funding doesn't come into the last like three, four, five days. So, so I think six, seven days out from the event, we, you know, we only had about five, six thousand dollars raised, but, you know, another another 15 came in in the last week. So it was pretty amazing. Actually, the response was pretty cool. I mean, speaking of the response, too, I mean, the day before they they weren't expecting as many plungers and as many people jumping yeah. in as well, too. That was a surprise in itself. Yeah, the registration numbers kept climbing. So we, we use an online site called Canada Helps uh, to help us fundraise because they allow you to set up a whole fundraising event site and people can make all their donations and pledges through there and get tax receipts, which is really convenient for us. Um, so, but it's really fun. It's kind of like coldest night of the year, the other event that's coming up in February, but um, you get to watch the website and see the numbers go up. So you can see how many teams are registering, how many funders are registering and how much money they've raised. So it's kind of fun to watch that and, uh, and see the uh, see the numbers grow. Okay, Let, to, to just tell everybody that just, what was going through your mind when you jumped in? Because I, I'm sorry, I will do almost anything for fundraisers, but it would be a hard no for me to jump into the river on January 1st. Talk about, you know, you're looking at the water, it's freezing cold out, <laughs> there's ice. <laughs> yeah, well, I think actually, yeah, I mean, the advantage to being one of the organizers for the event is that you're so busy. I mean, I was at the office till like seven, eight o'clock the night before just getting ready for the event. So <laughs> you're so busy planning and organizing that you're not really thinking about the jump. And Lana, who's one of our other board members who helped us organize as well and also plunged, um, you know, we were joking about the same thing, saying we're just not going to think about it. We're just not going to think about it <laughs> until it happens. So, and I think right up until the minute I plunged, it was the same thing. I was just laughing and joking with Alfred and David and and Bob Crow and uh, and literally just turned around, looked of the water i think i teased the guys that were in the water the fire fire department to say please just keep my head above water so my hair doesn't get wet and, and then you just jump so you try not to think about all the you know parts of your brain that are saying don't do it don't do it yeah that's <laughs> right that's right that. yeah it's I am a therapist, so I like to think that I can focus when I need to. <laughs> and you did, and you did, and so yeah. did, what, 116 other plungers. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Some had a lot more fun with it than I did. I think I made it look kind of boring, actually, but... <laughs> well, and th there's some people that you could tell they're seasoned and they look forward to it. It's like, let's go, oh, yeah. I want to get in yeah, there, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, say, they, they got their moves, moves organized, and yeah, they've got all these special uh, types of jump-ins, and yeah. yeah. So yeah, we have to do a special thanks to the the Perth Fire Department. They were in there. They had yeah. uh, the divers in the water. I think there was three of them in there. You know, just in case of any emergencies or anything, which none happens. Thank goodness. And dock yeah. masters came up, came in for you just a, a day or two before you needed a dock because the the yeah. You know. 
Yeah, and the and the Perth Fire Department, they actually come out on New Year's Eve as well, and they, they get the site all ready, and they cut the hole, and they check the ice, and they do all those pieces, and so um, so it's a full, you know, two-day event for them, really, and there's a whole crew of them that comes out, because they're the ones who actually help you get out of the water as well, so yeah, so they've got safety divers in the water, um, which is great, it makes you feel so safe, and um, and great for all the plungers, and then, uh, yeah, there's a whole crew of them there that help out on both days, so huge shout out to them, and then Dock Masters really saved us in the sense that, um, I think, you know, at, there was two years where the plunge was wasn't able to happen in person and so I think um, there was a last minute issue anyways with the docks that they've been using for the last few years and we weren't able to use those and so Dock Master came through right at the last minute and they actually drove the docks over on New Year's Eve and brought them back at the last minute so pretty amazing uh, support for the event so we thank them as well. I, I saw some you know business teams, family teams, uh, a big team from the Perth Stingrays. I mean, they're used Huge. to jumping in the water but warm but they, they even had some you know small children jumping in and they were loving it. They did, yeah. And besides the three um, organizers, so Alfred, myself, and David Lavery, um, like we were the top fundraisers. Um, Dave ended up uh, uh, raising twenty five hundred dollars himself. So, um, but it was actually one of the Stingray members, uh, Michaela, actually, who raised the most amount of money. She raised six hundred twenty dollars actually from the Stingray. So, wow. so we uh, presented her with a t shirt and uh, and a little gift to to say thank you at the Perth Pool. So, um, yeah, and there was actually I think a whole staff team actually from the Perth Pool actually came too. So there's a big group of them. Yeah, there was. Yeah. And and so how many people from Cornerstone Landing were there too as well? <laughs> so there was three of us. Well, I shouldn't say that. We had we had volunteers come as well, which helped out too. But uh, Lon and I are both board members and we both plunged. And then Chris, one of our staff, who's been with us for six years now, Chris Wright, he plunged as well. So, um, and the two of them made it look easy as well, so. Oh, what a successful event though. It was, it was great. It was really great. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah. And we had so many volunteers that helped too. Like, uh, you know, we had uh, a family show up, Karen and Linda and their two kids and they, they volunteered right from seven 30 in the morning all the way through, took care of registration in the kitchen. And so lots of people came through with uh, gifts and prizes and volunteering. And yeah, so it was a really great event. Excellent. Excellent. And like I was saying, there's some people that, you know, enjoy doing this and you could see they were well seasoned. They were looking forward, smiles on their face, laughing and everything like that. Are you going to do it again? <laughs> You know, I actually, uh, I was, I, I can't make the announcement of who's going to be next year's recipient, but I think it's going to be coming out really soon. And I'm really excited actually, um, cause I recommended, uh, them. And so I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, open, I'm open to the possibility to help them fundraise. So oh, if it excellent. helps in any way, I would do it. So if nothing else, I'll go and volunteer and help them. Ah, you're, you've been hooked. You've been hooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you, you mentioned quickly their coldest night of the year that's coming up too. It is, yeah, yeah. So we have um, uh, the Polar Bear Plunge, you know, is a one one time event, and they try to find a different charity every year. So we're grateful to them for that infusion of of uh, financial support for us, which helps us and uh, operate our programs throughout the year. Uh, but we have some signature events that we run every year. So we have a golf tournament that takes place. Uh, usually, uh, used to be at Timber Run, it's now at the Perth Golf Course. That's in June. But the next big event we have coming up is coldest end of the year, which is February twenty fifth coming up, and we've been running that for six years now. So we're re we're looking forward to it and gearing up to start getting ready. For for that one okay can you talk a little bit about it yeah so we started that six years ago i think the first three years we we ran it in Smith falls and then of course COVID happened so we were doing virtual walks instead but essentially it's a uh, national uh, event that takes place in uh, i can't even remember how many cities and, and towns they have involved now 150 um, or more across the country so everybody walks on the same day at the same time um, it's a walk around awareness it's specifically for housing and homelessness um, and uh, i think what people recognize the most is the toques that people get from it so um, they have a signature toque that comes out every year based on how much uh, you fundraise so if you raise a minimum i think they increased it to 150 this year but um and so it's really fun to see people collect the toques so we've got about six years of toques that we've had in leonard county um so yeah february 25th you can register online um at www cnoy.org and you can find the Lanark County site. Um, uh, it'll, it'll ask you for a location and you can just type in Lanark County and it'll take you to our actual site. And again, it's really fun to watch that website as well because you'll see the number of teams joining, the, the walkers joining and, and how much money they're fundraising and people set fundraising goals as well, which is kind of cool. So um, yeah, so anybody, any group, I would encourage any group to uh, round up a team. Um, any of our local real estate, banks, lawyers, anybody can actually get a team together and uh and go out and walk and it's it's a really good like staff team building event it's kind of fun to get out on a, on a saturday and and uh, do a walk so um and again it's for community awareness around housing and homelessness and, and helps us fundraise for our, our programs and you know that should have been one of my first questions is maybe you can tell everybody a little bit about cornerstone landing youth services too because of where this money goes to 
Yeah, so Cornerstone is a is a nonprofit charity that uh, started about it's got to be twelve or thirteen years ago now, actually, by a collection of people in Perth, and evolved eventually into Cornerstone and Youth Services. Um, and so we offer a housing first program, a, a modified housing first program for uh, young people in our county, and we work across the county in all the towns and townships. Um, and so we support about uh, seventy to eighty kids usually on average. Some of those kids are ones that carry over from the year before. Um, and then new referrals. Um, new referrals are usually anywhere between 20 and 30 a year. Um, and so we provide rent supplements when we have the funding to do so. And we help uh, young people find housing or stabilize their housing. Some some kids are in housing. They just don't have the financial supports to maintain it. So, um, so we help them with that. And we help kids with referrals to local services like mental health and food banks and employment services and those pieces. Um, and then because of these events, actually, and specifically uh, the coldest end of the year event, actually, we put the money from that event for five years towards the purchase of a house actually so we had we told uh, people at every event we're like we're gonna put this towards housing we're gonna put this towards housing so um and we were really excited in december of 2020 to be able to purchase our first house in perth so we now have a house that offers three beds of transitional housing for for young people and we converted uh just uh, about eight months ago we converted uh an addition in the back of the house into a one-bedroom apartment so we have a young person in there and that's also the location of which we hope to use our tiny home as a detached secondary unit as well at some point and I mean, this you're the you're the chair of the board for Cornerstone Landing. Yes. So yeah. this is volunteer work. Yeah, people confuse me as the yes. ED all the time. <laughs> That's right. This is all volunteer work. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any funding for uh, management or administration, really. So we uh, we have no managers, no EDs. Uh, we're working board, so we're constantly working as volunteer board members to uh, keep the organization running. So it's not necessarily the way I would choose to have it as we grow. It's becoming a big job for sure. But um, limited funding, there's limited funding streams for uh, rural communities to actually do housing and homelessness work. So um, so we're doing the best we can with the limited resources we can, and we try to funnel as much of the money as we, we possibly get to the kids. So And I, that, that's a point I want to make. I mean, this is all volunteer work. This isn't what you do. Like, you, you, what what do you do yeah. when you're not doing this? I mean, I don't know where you find the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to run a foster care agency, but I was teasing you earlier. That's what the boxes are for in the back, but uh, lots of files leave. Um, but I, uh, I'm i actually a full-time therapist, so I'm a psychotherapist that provides uh, mental health supports to uh, young people age 10 to, well, about 30. <laughs> so um, so I do that full-time in uh, Carleton Place. Wow, good for you, good for you. So once again, yeah. uh, the, the Polar Plunge, what a success, $22,411 uh, you managed to raise for, for Cornerstone Landing Youth Services. What a successful yeah. event. That's what we wanted to talk about today and get the word out there that uh, what you guys do and what a successful event. It was so nice to have it in person again.